Hi, this is Mrs. Yowd, and today we are in Algebra 1, Chapter 8, Lesson 3. We're going to learn how to find the vertex of a graph using ax squared plus bx plus c. So as you can see, I already found some uh, points here for these two graphs, so I'm going to go ahead and graph them both. The one on the left, we have negative 1, 10, and then 0, 0, 1, negative 6, and then down to negative 8. And you'll notice back, we come right back up at 3. We know that this graph is going to be a U-shape, and it is going to have an axis of symmetry coming down the middle like that. So that means that I know as soon as I hit the bottom and come start coming back up, I know that uh, my ax, where my axis of symmetry is. In this case, my axis of symmetry is going to be right here, and this point right here is the lowest point. And so now all that we need to do is to connect the points with a nice straight, or sorry, a nice curved uh, U-shape right there. Okay, so on the right-hand graph, we have 0, 6, 1, 0, 2, negative 2. And then notice I come right back up at a 0 when I hit 3. So that means that this is my axis of symmetry and my U-shape, or this graph, this point will be here, and that means that my U-shape will come right down like so. So the next question is asking us, what do we notice about the x-coordinate of the vertex of each graph? So I notice that we have the x-coordinate on this point, uh, on this graph over here, my x, my vertex is 2 comma negative 8. And over here, my vertex is 2 comma negative 2. So hopefully what you notice about these two points is that they both have the same x-coordinate. And that's what I wrote down here. The x-coordinate is the same for both. So now using the graph to find uh, the x-intercepts, the left-hand graph will notice that the x-intercept is both at 0 and positive 4. So now so we're now going to prove that that's the case by solving for this equation and set it to equal to 0. So how we do that, remember, is what we, what we need to first do. So let me change my thing here. We need to first uh, take out the 2x. So we factor out the largest number here, the largest amount. So we're left with x minus 4. Now that means that 0 is equal to 2x and also 0 is equal to negative 4, or sorry, x minus 4. So now solving for both of these, divide by 2 on this side, we get 0, adding 4 on both sides, and we get positive 4. So that means our x-intercepts are 0 and positive 4. And you'll notice up there on the graph, we can see up here, we can see that that's the same thing that we got up there, is 0 and negative positive 4. So one of the things that we can do in order to find the x-intercepts is to solve the equation for 0 and that will help us find the x-intercepts. So one of the things I wanted you to notice is that you'll notice on both of these equations, or sorry, both of these graphs, our, our axis of symmetry is x equals 2 here and also x equals 2 here. So if you look at x equals 2 and my x-intercept is here and here, and that means that I am at 0 and positive 4. So I'm 2 away from the axis of symmetry. Over here I have my axis of symmetry at x equals 2 as well. This time I'm only 1 away because this is this one of the zeros is at positive 1 and then one is at positive 3. And so that's only 1 away. You'll notice in both of these cases the axis of symmetry is right smack dab in the middle of those zeros. So what that means is that the x-intercepts are the same distance away, the same distance away from the axis of symmetry. On the left graph, we have our x-intercepts of 0 and 4, and our axis of symmetry is 2. On the right graph, our x-intercepts are at 1 and 3, and our axis of, intercept is, axis of symmetry is also 2. So what that means is that the axis of symmetry is, and here's the big conclusion for this, it is the average of the x-intercepts. And that is a big thing for us to know because that will help us find the axis of symmetry without, even if we don't know what the x-intercepts are. 
So on the next page, we want to solve a0 equals ax squared plus bx. And we want to take our x out because they both share x, so that leaves us with ax plus b. So that means that 0 equals x and also 0 equals ax plus b. This is already solved for. If we solve for x on the second one, we subtract b on both sides and that leaves us with negative b equals ax, then divide by a, and we're left with negative b over a equals x. So here is our other zero. So what we can conclude from that is what our x-intercepts are. So our x-intercepts are, for this graph here, our x-intercepts are zero and negative b over a. So now we're going to verify our answer by plugging in those two numbers that we found for x. We'll first plug in 0. We get a 0 squared plus b times 0, and that, of course, equals 0. The next one, you'll notice that we have a square here, so I'm going to apply it on both of those, which means we have, I'm going to put it up here, a times and negative b times negative b is positive b, so we're positive b over a squared, sorry, there's a square there as well, plus, and then the next one is b times negative b, so that's negative b squared over a. And uh, simplifying that, and simplifying that, we get b squared over a plus a negative b squared over a, which also equals zero. So as you can see, we have proved that these are the zeros of my graph, zero and negative b over a. So exploration number three, we know that the x-intercepts of the graph are zero and negative b over a. We just proved that in exploration number two. Um, in exploration number one, we found that the vertex of the graph occurs when x is equal to the average of the zeros. The average of the zeros would be 0 plus negative b over a divided by 2. We divide by 2 since there are two of them, and that's how you find average. Now simplifying that, we find that the average of the zeros then turns into this, negative b over 2a. So that means that the vertex of the graph occurs when x equals negative b over 2a because that is the average of the two zeros. So how do we find our vertex of the graph? Our first step is to find negative b over 2a. Then we plug that number, whatever it is, back into the function to find the point. So our vertex is going to be negative b over 2a, and then the function of negative b over 2a, whatever that is going to be after we plug it in. And number five here is an example of that. So we're given this graph, or we're given this equation, x squared minus 4x plus 3. So we have a equals 1, b equals negative 4, and c equals 3. So we want to take those numbers and plug it into negative b over 2a. So don't forget you have a double negative here. So it's negative parentheses negative 4 over 2a, which is 1. And when we simplify that, we get positive 2. So that would means that my vertex answer has to have 2 comma something. And now to find the rest of it, I need to take this answer that we got here and plug it back into the original problem, which gives me negative 1. So negative 1 is my y answer for my vertex. So that means my vertex for this graph is 2 comma negative 1. Okay, on the next page, we have the highest value and the lowest value, uh, which is the maximum and the minimum. So the maximum value is the highest range value up at the top of the graph when you have an upside down graph. And this one is the lowest one, and that's when you have a normal U shape. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom of this same page here, and in the notes section, we're gonna actually do a practice graph. So we're going to graph the function of x, 3x squared minus 6x plus 5. So remember the original equation of this graph, or the basic equation, is ax squared plus bx plus c. So that means we have a equals 3, 
b equals negative 6 and c equals 5. So our first step is to decide, is this a happy shaped graph or a sad shaped graph? Anytime you have the value of a greater than zero, it's going to be a happy shaped graph. Anytime you have that value less than zero, it'll be a sad shaped graph. In our case, since a is greater than three, or sorry, a equals three, we're going to have a U-shaped graph that's facing up. Step number two is to find the y-intercept. In our case, the y-intercept is equal to the is always equal to the c term. So in our case, our c term is five. So that means that our y-intercept is equal to five for this graph. Step three: find the axis of symmetry by using that negative b over two a that we just learned about. So here I'm plugging in negative six for b and three for a. And when I simplify that, I get positive 6 over 6, which equals 1. So that means that my axis of symmetry is x equal to 1. And lastly, we're going to plug in what we got that for the axis of symmetry into our equation to, find, to help us find the vertex. So I plugged in my 1 that I got here into the original equation from the top, as you can see and I simplified and I got two. So that means that my vertex is whatever I got for my axis of symmetry, in this case it was one, comma two, which is what I got when I plugged in that axis of symmetry number. Okay, so now we are finally ready to graph our graph. We know that our y-intercept, our c term, is five, so we're gonna go up one, two, three, four, five, and put a point on the y-axis. We know that our axis of symmetry is positive one, so that means I can draw a line down the axis of symmetry here. And that means as well that since I had that y-intercept of five, I know that I will be here because remember that yellow line there, the axis of symmetry, means that they're equivalent on either side. It's a symmetric line. We also know that our vertex is one comma two, which is here. So that means that we can go ahead and draw a nice U-shaped graph through those three points, and we have our answer. So on the next page, we need to find A, the axis of symmetry, and B, the vertex of each graph of the function. I'm going to do one of these with you, and then I'm going to pause and do the rest while you pause and do the rest on your own. So on number one here, we see that our axis, so remember this is ax squared plus bx plus c. So that means that in this case, we have a is equal to one, b is equal to negative 10, and c is equal to two. So when we plug in for the axis of symmetry, remember that's negative b over two a. So we're gonna plug it in, it's negative parentheses, negative 10 is my b over two and a is one. So I get positive 10 over two, which is five. So that means my axis of symmetry is x equals five. So now we're ready to plug it in and find out what our vertex is. So our vertex is, we're gonna plug in five into the equation. So that's five squared minus 10 times five plus two, which gives us negative 23. So that means my vertex is 5 comma negative 23. What I'd like for you to do now is pause this video and try the other three on your own. And when you're finished, unpause and see if you got it right. Okay, so here are the answers that you I got. Uh, I want you to check yours and see if you got it right. And if you did not, see if you can find your mistake. You can always ask me for help during my office hours on WebEx. Okay, so let's practice a few more on the next page. On number five here, we have 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. We know that this is going to be a happy shaped graph because the a term is positive. So a equals 3, b equals 6, and c equals 2. So our next step is to find our y-intercept. Remember our y-intercept is always our c term. So in this case, our y-intercept is 2. Our axis of symmetry is found by doing negative b over 2a. So when we plug in our b and a terms, we get negative 1. So now we're going to plug in that negative 1 back into the equation to help find our vertex. 
and once we plug in negative 1 into the equation, we get an output of negative 1 as well. So our vertex is negative 1 comma negative 1. Okay, so now we're ready to graph our equation. We have a y-intercept of 2, which is here. We have an axis of symmetry as negative 1, so I'm going to put my axis of symmetry in. Because of the axis of symmetry, we know that another point on our graph is there at negative 2, comma 2. And now we just need to graph our vertex, which is negative 1, negative 1. And of course, the last step is to draw a nice smooth U shape through those points that I'm given or that I found. I would like for you to do number six and seven on your own and then I, while well, I do them, and then so pause the video right now and go ahead and try six and seven and then I will show you what I got and you can compare your answers to mine. Okay, so here are the answers that I got for number six and seven. Make sure you check your answers carefully and let me know if you have any questions. So on numbers 8 through 13, we need to decide whether the function has a minimum or a maximum value, and then find that value. So on number 8, you'll notice that we have a negative a. a is negative 1 half. So that means that it is a graph that's going to be looking like that, which means that we're going to have a maximum value. So now we need to figure out what that maximum value is. And we find that by finding the vertex of that point. And the y term will be our answer because that's the highest y number, that's the highest range number. So basically we just need to do what we've been doing, which is finding the axis of symmetry by plugging in the numbers ne to negative b over 2a. And I get negative 5 as an answer for that. Now I'm going to take my negative 5 and plug it back into the equation and that will help me find my maximum value. And once we plug in negative 5 we get 14 and a half. So that means that my maximum value is 14 and a half. Why don't you guys go ahead and finish 9 through 13 and see if you can find the answers. Pause the video and then uh, go ahead and unpause to see if you got it right. All right, so here are my answers for the rest of those problems. Please check your answers and check your work if you've missed anything, see if you can find your mistakes. And of course, you can ask me questions during my office hours. Okay, so question 14 is giving us that this function explains the height and feet of a rocket t seconds after it was launched. The rocket explodes at the highest point. So if you can imagine here, what we have going on is we have a rocket that is coming up from the ground and it's coming back down, okay? Uh, at this highest point, this is when the rocket explodes. So if we find that, um, that vertex there, we will know how long it takes for it to explode and also the height that it explodes because this down here is time and this up here is height. So then that means that all we need to do is find the vertex. Remember we do that by doing negative b over 2a so now we're going to plug in 250 for b and negative 16 for a and when we simplify that we need to use a calculator and I get 7.8125 and so that is the moment that it explodes how many seconds it explodes after the launch. So now we need to take that 7.8125 and plug it back into the equation to figure out how high it is off the ground when it does that explosion. And so I find that the rocket is 976.56 feet off the ground when it explodes. And that concludes our lesson for 8.3, Chapter 8, Lesson 3. Please log in to my WebEx during, uh, during my office hour and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Have a great day.